Hey guys, Nathan with Blue Oak. So, you can see I'm in quite fancy apparel today, and uh, that's because we have an air spading job today. And I've done it enough times to know that I need to protect my whole face from rocks and dirt and stuff flying. Um, but I'm also gonna show a couple of other tools that we've got. So, I've got the air spade, of course, but I've got a hatchet, and some cutting tools along with some clippers and stuff and that's for girdling roots if I come in if I end up finding girdling roots as we as we're air spading around the trees we'll be able to um, to cut them we also have a prod for if we see any cavities we can prod them and, and see how deep they are so kind of like a little doctor's kit bag this is our massive air compressor and before we um, before we even start, we're gonna we're gonna test the air spade because getting down there is really gonna be hard. So don't want to get down there and have to come back up. We want the hose to go to the other side of that pillar so that we don't hit their car. There we go. hickory tree that is totally buried well not totally buried but you can see that we don't have a healthy trunk flare exposed so what we're going to be trying to do today is get this trunk flare exposed and then if I come in if, if we see some girdling roots and rot and stuff like that underneath we'll at least know we can correct girdling roots um, but you know this is right next to the client's house house Get a pan up of that. It's a gorgeous hickory, beautiful tree, really mature, but um, right next to the house, so we want it to be nice and healthy. buttress roots that we're trying to expose so the ground was up to here luckily we didn't have to go too deep but all these little roots are the tree the trees roots coming back up to the surface to get oxygen um, they all have to be cut because they're coming back on the main trunk All right, so as we continue to expose this network of surface roots, we've come in contact with exactly what I was talking about. This is a girdling root, and this is a great example. This is our main buttress root, and it hosts a network of anchorage roots as well as some um, fine absorbing roots that come off of every larger root. But right here, we have this little guy that's cutting it off and as this buttress root grows this one will act like a tourniquet and totally um, choke it out so what we have to do is we have to cut it now as soon as I cut it look at what you can see you can see that indent a little bit and it's not too bad I've seen a lot worse but you can see how it started already it was starting to damage this is another one that we have maybe we can leave this one i'm not sure we're going to keep digging down and, and getting it if it's not choking out a main buttress root i'll leave it but that is why this is so important because trees that have had their root flares buried over tend to have all their 
roots grow back on towards the surface and back in towards the base especially with the house being this close so now we've we've gotten this one exposed you can see that we're starting to get this one exposed on this side this is the last one that i really want to get to and i'm trying to get an idea of where it is it might be right there so just maybe a little bit further <laughs> 